Welcome to the Common Sense Podcast. I'm Christopher Scott, author of the book on Common Sense and host of the Christopher Scott Show. It's the podcast for all the people who have better things to do than sift through all the political nonsense. Let's get started. Common Sense by Thomas Paine is the most compelling case for freedom ever made. At its core, it was a call for independence from Britain. This podcast will take you through the highlights and main points of the entire book. It's not meant to replace the full text, but it will provide an overview. Common Sense begins with a letter where Thomas Paine acknowledges the difference of opinion on the matter of independence. He writes, Not everyone will agree with the principles outlined in this book. That may be because things have been wrong for so long that people have come to accept it as normal. Some people might be reluctant to accept these principles since it defies the normal. Eventually, however, the truth always prevails. Eventually, every abuse of power is called into question. Sometimes it will cause people to question the whole system that provided the power in the first place. The King of England has united with Parliament to exercise complete control over everything. But the people of this continent, who have suffered because of the abuse of this power, have a right to question the claim of this power and the right to reject it altogether. Then he points out that he's not trying to create further disagreement, and he encourages debate on the principles of the matter. He says this book is about principles. Its purpose is not to attack or compliment any person or people. Here's a, a quick summary of the points he makes. He lays out the origin of government, why government is needed in the first place, and what a proper government should do. He does this while comparing a few of the injustices of the current form of government being a colony of Britain. He uses that as a basis to explain why having a king is wrong. Then he switches gears. He explains the current situation in America. He does this because the primary argument against independence is from people who are afraid they will not survive without reliance on Britain. He explains in detail how capable America is and why the time for independence is now. The last section, the addendum, added in the second edition, deals with the issue of church and state. The Quakers and others, fearful of conflict, were supporting Britain. There's a real power in common sense. If you're interested in the philosophy of common sense and what it can do for you, or the book Common Sense by Thomas Paine, be sure to visit the thebookoncommonsense.com for articles and information about my books. The links for that are in the show notes below. The book on common sense explains how to get common sense, what it means, and some of the best advice you'll ever get. And my book, Common Sense, The Retold Story of Common Sense by Thomas Paine, is translated into modern English so anyone can understand it. It's the best way to read it, and it's something that should be required reading for everyone. You can get more information about both books as well as my future books at thebookoncommonsense.com. The first section of the book details the origin and design of government. This section in itself is a magnificent thesis on the origin of government, why it's needed, and what a natural form of government should look like. He says some writers have so completely blended society with government, they seem to make no distinction between the two. However, not only are the two different, but they have different origins. Society is a result of our wants, whereas government is a result of our selfishness. Society allows our happiness in a positive way by uniting us with each other, while government negatively affects us by suppressing our wrongdoings. Society is a protector, government is a punisher. He then states, Every society is a blessing, but government, even at its best, is nothing more than a necessary evil, which is a theme that's repeated by many founding fathers. It speaks to the distrust that early framers of our government held for the institution of government in general. He goes on to say, Government at its worst is intolerable to the point that the misery we suffer by a government is the same misery we would suffer without any government. But the misery we suffer is made worse by the fact that we create our own suffering through the government we create. Government-like clothing is an indication of the sinfulness of humanity. 
Every ruler's power is a result of his people's own selfishness. If everyone always did what was right and fair, there wouldn't be any need for laws or government. Since that's not the case, people find it necessary to surrender part of their freedom to secure a means of protection. It's a matter of choosing between two evils. For that reason, security of one kind or another is the sole purpose of government. Therefore, government will unquestionably grow with the promise of providing better benefits, from providing basic security to whatever form it needs in order to ensure total control. He then acknowledges what could be described as the unfortunate need for government. He makes a prophetic prediction that government will always grow. It's a prediction that has remained entirely true throughout history. He says, out of necessity then, people are pulled together to take advantage of each other's talents and abilities. In the beginning, they rely on each other, so there's no need for laws in government. Over time, however, selfishness and laziness settle in. People grow complacent. As a second group of people begins providing a disproportionate amount of work, they begin to see the need to establish some form of government to correct the unfairness. In other words, government is a system required by the inability of people to individually cooperate for the fairness of everyone. This is the basic design and downfall of government. That is freedom and security. And no matter how idealist such a conclusion might seem, basic human nature will eventually prove it true. He adds a simple observation. I draw my idea from the form of government from a natural law. The simpler something is, the less liable it is to be confusing and the easier it is to fix. It's especially interesting when you look at governments today and how complicated the systems have become. Using this as a basis for the description of a natural and healthy government, he criticizes the monarchy. In other words, he gives an example of what government at its worst looks like. He says, absolute governments, which are the disgrace of human nature, have this advantage. They're simple. If the people suffer, they know that whoever is in charge is causing their suffering. The simplicity also makes it easy to see the remedy. There's no confusion of what's causing the problem and what to do about it. But the Constitution of England is so exceedingly complex that the nation could suffer for years without being able to discover where the problem lies. Some people will blame one thing, some people will blame another for the resulting problems and suffering. And every political expert will have a different advice. What Thomas Paine wrote in Common Sense, attacking the issues to bring unity in a time of great division, Defining the origins of government and mapping out the case for a proper government was profound, and it remains profound today. It's interesting to compare these thoughts and beliefs to what we see today. This too, fighting the popular belief, was something Thomas Paine had to address. I know it's difficult to get over local or long-standing beliefs, but if we take the time to look at the different components of the English Constitution, we find at its core two ancient tyrannies with some new Republican elements sprinkled in. Today the fight is not against monarchy, but perhaps the core issues remain. In fact, everything he wrote, there are strong comparisons to what we see today and various countries and forms of government. That's why common sense is important today as ever. Thanks for listening today. I hope you'll also check out my podcast, The Christopher Scott Show. You can get that on iTunes and most podcast players or at ChristopherScottShow.com. Make it a great day.